Homer, an ancient Greek mystery. If we step into a bookstore or open an app to buy a book, it is rare, if ever, that we can separate it from its author. What is The Shining, Pet Cemetery, or Salem's Lot without their connection to Stephen King, after all? It's as easy as breathing to know who publishes what, even if certain series are penned by ghost writers or contracted to assume the persona of V.C. Andrews, perhaps. Yet, one of the markers of history-making still remains a mystery to us. Who is Homer? And did he actually write the epic poems long associated with his name? If, as most scholars now believe, Homer lived and created at the end of the 8th or beginning of the 7th century BC, and if the Trojan War took place at the end of the Mycenaean Age and marks the beginning of the Dark Ages of Greece, it means that four centuries separated the alleged events of the Trojan War and the theorized day in which Homer wrote the epics, roughly around 750 BC. It is strange indeed that his attempt and success in assembling a mythos or a didactic narrative about the Dark Ages is the one that survives in epic form. And it's curious that Homer stands out as the one who attempts to archaeologize when in Homer's day, there was no science of archaeology, no written Greek history to assist the storyteller. Where did he get these details from the past? How did he know the practice or artistry of Achilles' shield, one that hadn't been observed since the Bronze Age? The best answer we have is that the stories about the Trojan War circulated first as song, surviving hundreds of years before they were written down. Both the Iliad and the Odyssey contain techniques and a rhyming structure in the original ancient Greek, set line compositions, metric cadences, alternating choruses, and repeated poetic titles for characters, also called epithets, all which could be used as mnemonic devices for rhapsodes or orders to remember the poem's lines to perform them for audiences. Unknowingly, then, these devices constitute what will be known as the epic structure. Assembling Greek history is full of these types of best answers, and we continue to uncover more as the centuries pass. The major scholarly topic that I would like us all to remember when it comes to Homer is what's called the Homeric question. The Homeric question is a question of authorship, and it is twofold. One, who was Homer? Was he real? And two, did he really write the Iliad and the Odyssey? First, who was this guy? The only compelling information we are told about Homer is that he possibly lived in the Iron Age, was likely blonde, and was probably from Ionia. Even so, each one of these details is presented with plenty of uncertainty. There are several biographers, both from past and relative present, that attempted to posit more about who he was, but there isn't much hard evidence. Second, did he really write what we say he wrote? Historically, there has been two scholarly camps or approaches to this answer, the analysts and the Unitarians. In response to the Homeric question, the analysts say that there are too many inconsistencies in the epic poems for them to be created by only one person. Many people made alterations over time, which shows most sorely to them in the abrupt and incongruent ending of the Odyssey. Due to its original circulation as orature as well, it seems that scribes and caretakers of the poems simply attributed it to Homer. The analysts recognize that the Homeric poems contain elements of widely different ages and are inextricably blended, which undermines any credibility that one person could be so omnipotent about Greek history when history was not yet culturally important. Some analysts believe, too, that the Iliad and the Odyssey, although both attributed to Homer, are not written by the same poet at all because of these aforementioned inconsistencies. Unitarians, on the other hand, are a bit more optimistic. They contend that we can overlook the inconsistencies because only such narrative complexity could have been executed by a singular poet. 
One example that Unitarians use to support their stance lies in how the beginning and ending lines of the Iliad parallel in cadence and meaning. This, to them, could be no accident. Unitarians also support a compelling theory that all the great adventures in Homer's epics were originally their own little short stories performed through song. And the genius of Homer was to revise and compile the stories into two large epic poems, both with their own heroes and character arcs. My personal favorite detail that Unitarians embrace is Homer's emulation of Ionian individualism. In the ancient Greek world, Ionia was known for upholding the individual as the highest good. This individualism is perfectly illustrated through Achilles' character development and his agency over his own glory. The genius who compiled these stories must have been from Ionia. And because the lore points to Homer being an Ionian, Unitarians do not see this connection as a coincidence, but a perpetuation of Homer's possible authorial intentions. This isn't a modern question either. Greeks, Romans, and medievalists debated whether Homer penned the poems himself, let alone if he existed at all. Modern scholars conclude, though, that it is unlikely now that this question can be perfectly answered and that embracing the ambiguity fuels the mystery and timelessness of the epic poems themselves. More so, whether it is absolutely and perfectly factual, we can believe that Homer is the collective. All the orator, history makers, rhapsodes, scribes, possibly one dedicated poet from Ionia, and the proceeding advisors, all to whom we are indebted for setting the stage for the importance of chronicling history, even if it is at first an art rather than a science. Thanks for watching.